right away, we get to see the Ash Band. I mean, they talked about it in, you know, the little insight into SKT's communication during the Rocks series. They were already planning on first picking that. So off the table here for Samsung. And that there's so much pressure on Samsung because especially their blue side this game to get a strong bottom lane. Blue side bottom lane pushing is so important. And these bands are showing us a lot about the team's priorities. The Syndra is banned yet again from Samsung. This is something they've banned every single game they have. Uh, since they lost to TSM, and the Misfortune ban also shows that SKT is not comfortable with that Zyra MF trade, at least now. I'm really curious if they have to ban Zyra or if they're trying to bait a first pick and take it with the second rotation. I'm so excited because Wolf said that he was trying to prepare, you know, something special as well. And if there is another special counter pick that he's going to use into the Zyra, extremely excited for it because that would also give them a bunch of power in the pick ban phase if Samsung used their first pick on that. I don't think it's going to happen uh, as the extra priority should probably be used elsewhere. Yeah, three mid lane bans. No Victor ban, though. Mm -hmm. But I don't see them first picking the Victor, especially with things like Zyra on the table. And that's the thing, if they don't, Faker has been undefeated in summer on Victor. He has a better Victor all-time uh, win record than Crown does because SKT wins so much. Yeah, that helps a lot <laughs> uh, when you have a two-year losing streak on the side of Samsung Galaxy. Uh, they did lock in that Zyra. Whether or not Wolf has got a special sneaky scary support remains to be seen. But for SK Telecom, the world is their oyster with their two picks. Yeah, and there's a lot of power picks available right now. So even if SKT can lock in this Jin and Olaf, which looks formidable, the Caitlyn is still available for Ruler to be able to play it. And the Caitlyn Zyra lane is obnoxious to play against. So I would like these two picks by SKT if they do decide to lock them in, but it doesn't really deny Samsung all that much. Definitely does not. It would also leave the door open here since the Olaf looks like it is going to be locked in as it's been high priority for uh, Ambition the entire tournament. They need uh, maybe some extra speed with a Karma or something like that showing up on the side of SKT to ensure that they don't fall off later. Uh, karma into Zyra should be theoretically good uh, if Wolf decides to go that route. And now for Ambition. No Nidalee to pick from, no Olaf. We'll find out what he falls back to. Fairly quick lock-ins for the Caitlyn and the Poppy on the side of Samsung. Yeah, the Poppy's interesting here because Duke has played Trundle against Poppy and been very comfortable with it in the past if they want to get late game split push priority. They also, if they did that, would most likely pick something like a Karma Trundle here and then save the last pick for Faker. That's what I think they're going to do. And if you already look at, you know, win conditions here oh. for Samsung, Samsung are locking in Duke? a lot of tools for sieging. I mean, they have the Caitlyn, Zyra, Poppy can use the ultimate to zone at towers for sieging as well. Samsung, if they can hold up in the early game, look like they are getting an extremely strong, you know, minion wave control locked in, siege potential locked in, and that very standard tank for the front line as well. A lot of options, and of course, Crown will get his hands on that Victor. Um, not banned yeah. out once again, not to uh, stolen away. Instead, Faker with that Oriana. He's had some phenomenal performances in the semifinals on that champion. Faker, you know, as great as he is, does also have a lot of hubris and will let people play whatever they want into him for the first game. I don't know if they'll let it happen again if it ends up being a big factor, but he's extremely confident in his Oriana, and that has been one of his best champions. It's been his most played champion all time as well. I'm a little surprised that they decided to pick it early if they were just going to pick the Trundle anyway. That's kind of a given going into the Poppy in the top lane, but like you said, Faker's just incredibly confident, and sometimes SKT do this early on in the game. And uh, Lee Sin, first competitive pick all year long for Ambition. We heard the analyst is talking about it. There's a lot of pressure on Ambition's shoulders now. I got super excited as soon as I see the Lee Sin lock in for Ambition because I'm definitely looking forward to his play on the champion as he has used it before, but so long ago till we've seen it. The other thing is that will this change his play style? Him and Crown have actually one of the lowest percentage of time spent together pre-15 minutes. Ambition does not spend a lot of time around mid, yet Faker has been the one to attack for a lot of the teams trying to take him down. And Crown said himself in the video that if you want to beat SKT, you have to beat mid lane. Camp mid lane, we'll find out whether or not Ambition decides to play that route, whether or not he's going to gank out. Kopi's obviously very, very <laughs> excited to see Ambition, the leader, the captain of Samsung, and to find out exactly what he can do. 
Um, fairly standard team comps, no gigantic surprises here. Yeah. Karma into Zyra, not the most surprising. It's something that we've talked about and actually seen a couple times. Yeah, we've definitely seen the Caitlyn Zyra lane be able to win the push war in almost all matchups. But you also have to give the player edge to Bang and Wolf because of Bang's numbers so far at the World Championship. So that could be a lane that is dictated heavily by jungle and mid lane priority roaming down there to the bottom lane. And let's see whether or not Crown will do the roaming because Fakers had a penchant not to do so. The team compositions were on your screens. Staples, put your hands together as we load onto the rift for game one of Samsung Galaxy taking on SK Telecom for the World Championship title. So exciting right here and so much can happen in the very early game. Something that's been important in the bottom lanes in these games is people sending as many people as possible to get rush priority in the bottom lane. Notice how many people Samsung are sending down there so they can get the early push and guarantee it with the Zyra Caitlyn. Gold trade here for supports and Core Jake J gets off all of his stacks on the Spell Thieves. Would you prefer the good? Bonus golden and a throw up of the flag for Samsung. Look at the invade here from SKT with everybody, you know, showing on bottom side and the extra numbers for Samsung. They go in for some jungle intelligence. All right, we'll take a look at how Samsung handled this. Cuvee, a little bit of pressure. Minions Three man stack from SKT hanging around. And I want to keep my eyes on ambition, how he decides to play this early game. We know Olaf's can go for those greedy low health clears. If Ambition has a good play or a good read, maybe he could get an advantage that way. Yeah, but I also don't think it would be wise of him right now. Because Samsung sent so many people to the bottom side, they left the window open for a ward to be placed at the start of his jungle, and he should be able to anticipate that and go for a fairly standard clue. Exactly. Plus, the early intelligence, the early vision is a cascading effect. Having seen the start here from Ambition, uh, Banky now has what he needs to work with to try and track him all game long. Bangi, by the way, one of the highest ward counts for junglers at the entire tournament. Very big vision focused, and he does that to try and protect his solo lanes to let them lane without a lot of interaction with the enemy jungler. That's something I want to watch throughout the course of the series, because SKT is such a good read on Peanuts in their semi-final matchup, trading at both mid and top. Hubei gets chomped on by Duke and then forced away. And really pay attention to who gets the early shove in these lanes, because if SKT is able to take control of all three, that gives Bengi absolute freedom. Duke on Trundle can shove in the Poppy early. Faker's actually able to get a ward into the Raptors, which is huge. This gives them so much knowledge over where Ambition is going to be. And they're also winning the shove in the bottom lane. That is the second time he has done that, leashed to the small Raptor a bit too far. Uh, and the one tick of regeneration denies him the last hit. Not going to be able to grab that little CS, but the information's still going to be gained. Ambition clearing out the bottom lane. We caught a quick glimpse of Bang and Wolf shoving forward with that Jin Karma. Rule and Core JJ, a little bit of uh, pressure on that bottom lane. And Core JJ, he's not a champion that can, obviously, Rome can set up some plays. This is a guy who has spent a lot of time assisting the rest of his team, um, not only in his regional league, but also here at Worlds. The thing is, on Zyra, that is very dangerous. Uh, Zyra definitely one of the supports most prone to getting killed off by mid laners early. Plus, she wants to stick around in the lane to spawn more seeds. Yeah, and it makes it marginally safer if you're a Karma to be able to do this, but just this goes to show you how important the wards were early. Bengi trying to get an invade in, but Ambition is actually cycling back to his blue very quickly. They did see him at Raptors, so they know he could be here. This could be problematic. Blue Sentinel secured. Bengi gets the buff and gets out. That's that cascading effect there working for SKT. Bengi did a full power clear there, ending over on the blue. Hasn't lost any time, Whoa. but Bang! Grasping roots onto Bang! This isn't trying to take a lot of damage. No summoner spells. Exhaust was used by Wolf, though. And Core JJ backs away. And all of these plays are actually being centered around Vision. Suddenly, Samsung was able to get aggressive in the bottom lane because they had eyes on Bengi, and then they can use the aggression from the Zyra and the Caitlyn. It gets the exhaust out from Wolf, and it gives him the shove on the bottom side. Exactly. If you go back and watch so many of the games from both of these teams, even in their LCK games, a lot of the early kills come over those fights, either over pink wards or trying to clear the early Vision. 
Also in the mid lane, Fakers managed to get a recall off, picking up a pink ward and an extra Dorans without falling behind in waves to Crown. That's actually very important and should kind of slingshot him to about a 10 CS advantage after Crown eventually has to back. Because Faker is going to keep the mid lane pressure as long as possible now. Meanwhile, that blue pink ward in the pixel bush has been there before minions spawned. It's been there the entire game. That is one of those high value pink wards and it will stay there for a while. Ambition moving top. Might though. see the first gank here. Doesn't have the ward in the tri brush. He snuck in through an entrance. Wow, Duke can't get away just yet. Sonic Wave connects. Duke is able to literally walk to safety. Ambition shows his face. No kill or summoner and down CS to Bengi. Yeah, that just... Duke is a very hard person to gank, especially when he is on Trundle. And he had to deal with Smeb and Peanut ganking him all series and was able to stay alive in most situations. And once again, that gank allows Bengi to go for an invade. This time he's got to be a little bit more careful though because they don't have as much backup as they would like. Both supports are roaming to the top though. You can see Wolf catch him. Wolf immediately went to roam top. And oh, he's Aaron. caught! He's caught! Call JJ! Oh. He knocked out Bengi and Samsung Galaxy! They're not going to do it yet! Bengi runs for his life! Here comes Faker! Flash over the wall and nobody dies! As I said, Wolf was mirroring the roam the entire time of Core JJ. He had just walked away though. That was way closer than he wanted to. He had a flash for that shield. Such an incredibly oh. dangerous invade by Bengi and he barely gets away because they communicate so much about when they're going to potentially need support. Way too risky, shouldn't have been done, but they get away with it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we see Crown clearing the wave with his ultimate to try and get the tempo advantage as far as mid lane goes. And the tension continues to rise here as we have yet to draw first blood in the final. Yeah, you could see the vision toggles. Bengi didn't know Ambition was there until the Q hit him. Oh. He popped his ghost early, but the flash shield by Wolf and Ambition can't quite finish him off. Also, whenever you see this, this is basically a PSA. Start chugging your potion as soon as you <laughs> get in combat, because that could save your life. Manages to get Bengi out alive. Summoner spells blown though. So Ambition, no flash. Wolf, no flash, and a couple of ghosts. So Wolf is gonna be a little careful. Down in this bottom lane, Ruler almost at that ace in the hole. Yeah, in a sense, both of them have to be a little bit careful because even if Ambition were to try and gank, they would have been fearful of a teleport. Now it's been burned though. <laughs> See you later, dude. Uh, why? Uh, <laughs> did I one minion, I think? I think it denied, denied one almost minion. nothing. That well, looked cool. To be fair, the cooldown's not very long, so. <laughs> Cuvee's going for the style points, all right? It's about sending a message. It's about starting this game and showing Duke who's boss. Crown is going to clear out a pink ward now in the mid lane. Um, actually done relatively well. That river sort of fight has allowed Crown to stay fairly even when it comes to CS. 4JJ uh -oh. gets caught down, gets locked down. Bang's looking to move forward. That's a flash. There's support coming from the bottom. Ambition's coming in from behind, but so is Bengi. Good flash from Bang. A lot of summoners used, though. Bengi is on the way as well for SKT, but I doubt they'll be able to get much done as a lot of resources were used from SKT escaping that gank as well. And you can tell Ambition was looking to punish the flash that Wolf used in the mid play where he roamed. Yeah, unfortunately, they had to go for Bang as a target who still had a splash, but it's still a good amount of harass. They're able to get down on that lane. They took enough of a beating with the gank as well, though, so looks like he's just going to reset. Well, I'm watching Ruler in the bottom lane. Oh, no, in the mid, Faker's going to get caught up by the gravity field. Oh, while that's happening, Whoa. Ruler's in trouble. The lost shot doesn't kill him, but no, Deadly oh. Forest. Is there enough HP? Ruler's sticking around. Summoner heal has been used. Bengi is sticking around in the jungle. Ruler's running for his life. Now Ambition challenging Bengi. Bengi gets rooted up. The Bramble back is fighting. There he was to Bengi. Here comes Crown. Gets a reply. Poor JJ and Crown still in the jungle. Ambition was trying to bait that kill because he knew the Crown was coming down from the backside, but he underestimates Bengi's burst and gives over first blood. Plus, just before that. First Blood almost went as Ruler was about to die. He survived with 2 HP. The lifesteal <laughs> from that last auto helped him survive. 2 HP gives the First Blood over to Bangi though. Now, this is an assisted kill for Samsung, so they do get that extra money. Yeah, the First Blood bonus does go over to Bangi, but that's not quite enough to 
manage what happened with the kill. And the fact that Crown gets the kill is actually very important for them if they can enter the team fight phase with pretty close goal. Yeah, Crown has been a huge carry for this team. Ever since he joined the team, it's been about him controlling the team fights later with Victor. Victor, this champion that can scale so well with AP from the mid lane and bring tremendous amounts of damage to those team fights. You know, getting closer to 10 minutes, small gold lead for SKT. And I want to keep my eyes on Ruler because this is a guy who is throughout the course of the World Championship been caught out, you know, alone in side lanes, underneath towers when Core JJ's roaming. And it's one of those things you could attribute to being a little bit more of a rookie, a little bit more, you know, inexperienced in those calls. He definitely is a rookie. He might be rookie of the year, though, as he has also had a tremendous amount of good plays as Bangi returns for the second steal. Yeah, so this is completely denying Crown blue buff, which is going to make it really difficult for him to keep the mid lane shoved. Faker didn't even get the blue here, but he can still go back and get his own blue when Vengi so chooses. This makes it difficult for Crown. Look, he already burned some summoner spells, and he's ulted now twice just to shove out the wave. Might have some kill threat. Oh, 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 oh. still gets it. the last tick. He's on the ground. Solo kills Faker. He said to beat SKT, you have to beat mid lane. And even though he's down in CS, he did get his solo kill. Ruler's caught out, does have summon a flash. Wolf gets over the grasping root to the strangle thorns. Ruler turns around, looks for a headshot onto Bang. Bang reloads and ace in the hole. Not gonna be enough. Bang and Wolf don't get the kill. Look at the minimap. Ambition, he's coming in from behind. Sonic Wave needs to hit. Flash, kick into the Sonic Wave. Now Bang's the target. Ambition sidesteps away. Bengi's running in. The kill! The kill! He outplays the Ragnarok and the Ghost! Poor JJ Holy. will go down, gets run down, and Bengi's got a second! Alright, so much just happened that all started with Crown solo kill in the mid lane, and that transitioned into the gank down to the bottom side. Such slim margins this early on in the game. Faker thought Crown was just clearing a minion wave when he got hit by too many ticks of the Chaos Storm and flashed away a little bit too late. And then that bottom side gank, very nearly a total disaster for SKT. But because Bang got that last hit on Bishop before he died, and because Bangy ran one down, SKT still up 700 gold. Bang indeed. The burst damage here we're going to see come out of him to avenge Wolf. All right, so Wolf does get the exhaust off. Uh, through the Sonic Wave, but it doesn't matter. And notice Ambition gets a little too close and eats a turret shot here, which puts him in kill range for a bouncing grenade into the fourth shot. The ordering was perfect from Bang, but that wouldn't have been possible if Ambition didn't take that turret shot. Exactly. Bangy now getting chased out of the jungle as they try and clear that pink ward. Well, taking a look at Bengi, by the way, 70 CS, two kills. He's plus 30 and a kill under his belt. He's got an Orianna and a Karma for support jet. You talked about the speed boost that Bengi's going to want for Olaf. He's half fed and he's got speed boost. Yeah, I mean, this is a situation where if you had a jungler like Peanut, you'd think the team would play around him to carry the game. I wonder if SKT will do that with Bengi because that's where their gold is. Meanwhile, Crown taking control of that mid lane after the extra kill and taking the opportunity to roam up to the top side. Nothing there for him, though. And now he's going to have to get back very quickly, probably lose out on a couple of CS in payment for that roam. Yeah, and because of the two kills, he's also fully upgraded his hex core, which is going to help him move around the map a lot, getting the move speed on the Q. And it also allows his ultimates that he's already killed Faker with once to travel faster and make it almost needy for Faker to either burn a summoner spell or lose over half of his health just for harassing him in lane. Well, Jet, we're approaching uh, the 15 minute mark and Crown's got six solo kills, five of which before 15 minutes. Let's see if poor JJ is going to get killed. Body blocked by Ruler is Whisper. Fires two with three. Final shot through the wave, and really what Ruler body blocks them all. There's that dragon, though, being started up by Ambition. Pink Ward outside and inside of the Drake. Looks like there will be no contest here from SKT. The thing is, SKT, this is such a good steal away from SKT because the Jin with the completed Ghost Blade is such a huge power spike in that lane. Mm -hmm. And the bottom lane surviving for Samsung is huge. Yeah, and even though Bengi's got that giant CS advantage on Ambition, they don't have Pink Ward control in the Dragon area, and they need to actually go and take some pressure back, which is they're going for now. Shot they wave on the two, and that's just easy. Ambition wow. gets dunked. Baker uses his third summoner spell, Bengi, to get revenge on Samsung, and now Bengi's head and bottom. They saw that play so far in advance. Faker ghosted from the mid lane to get there, and now with two people dead, Cube and Duke 
both would have a chance to teleport into this. They're looking to threaten a dive. They need some poke. Expect the teleports to come in. Look for the strangle thorns from Core JJ. He needs to stop them. Bang gets oh. caught up. Strangle thorns not going to knock him up. Core JJ and Rila trying to run away. Q phase teleports it in, and Duke canceled his. Yeah, that's actually huge for SKT. Duke can now wail on that top lane turret, and that pushes him closer to getting the first turn of the game. Beggy that interrupts the recall. Plus, SKT are also pushing mid lane. There's pressure on all sides here from SKT. Again? Uh, closing in on Samsung, and it's going to yes. be up to Ambition to go top. Cubey's got to understand that play right there, that he's going to get interrupted again, especially after it happened the first time. That's the mid lane turret that actually falls first from the relentless pushing of Faker. SKT swarm into Samsung territory and turn up the speed of the game. And that's the thing, with three pink wards in the river, Samsung felt safe in that quadrant of their jungle, but they snuck through where the vision was and they are making a repeat attempt at the Vanguard's bottom lane. Ultimate. Oh. No teleports this time, and Faker is also on the way. The curtain call comes out, Core JJ flash and ruler, flash into 90 cal. Benga decides not to chase further, but every summoner spell blown. The tower will be the prize Minion Wave Conga lines in. It's a 4,000 gold lead for SKT, and it's only going to grow. They focus on this a lot on the analyst. That's of the time that the mid lane turret will fall. Faker focuses so much on controlling that mid lane. As soon as it does, map wide open here for SKT. Meanwhile, though, Crown trying to push back in the mid lane. It's, uh, Ambition even trying to steal away a little red buff for himself. And Samsung need to show poise right now. They're down 4,000 gold to the defending world champions who have just made a bunch of big plays. And the reaction normally would be to try and panic and get something back. They can't overextend themselves against SKT, who is the best reactive team in the world. All right, let's take another look at this invade double early. kill. And he got the perfect oh. shockwave at the very end. Crown had even popped his ghost to try and get move speed, but just a little bit too late to get out of the range. And Faker knew that they had both burned Flash prior, so they wouldn't be able to flash that Shockwave. So when they had that ward in the Rafter camp see him, he saw the play and they made it. Manages to connect, and that allows SKT to just steamroll ahead. They've got CS advantages in every single lane. Their jungler's a beefy frontline ball delivery system. And SKT, they're going top for the next tower. Yeah, they've got a lot of wards here for Samsung, so on the top side. So they do see it coming, and they will back off. Doesn't mean they're not going to lose that objective, though, as the top lane here. Very, very low as Duke finishes it off. And also notice the team-wide rotations here. Wolf actually covers the mid lane so that Crown can't ship that mid lane turret. Three turrets to zero is something you rarely see nowadays, uh, especially Samsung losing the first three turrets early. Exactly. There's, there's an ebb and flow to the play of most League of Legends games, especially the high-level League of Legends games. And that has to do with both teams only having five champions to allocate. So if one team, SKT, makes a play on the top side, usually there'll be a counterplay from Samsung on turret. the other side. That's why you see one turret to one, or a, most two turrets to one, but to get all three right here means Samsung hasn't been able to execute any of their counter plays on SKT, and a lot of that just channeled off of the play that Faker and Bengi made when they got the double kill. And it just snowballed all the way downhill. Cube, if there's one shining light, somewhat holding his own top lane in terms of CS, but unfortunately, those teleports elsewhere has cost him a tower. And that means Cube is going to have a much harder time into what is effectively a counter matchup as we're get, getting closer and closer to this mid and late game, where you can take over side lane pressure. Exactly. As we're getting closer to this mid game, let's talk about how that looks like. You know, SKT, they've got Duke with this pure split push build. He has no tankiness for a team fight. He does not want to fight any more than a single person. Uh, he's got the extra lifesteal, so he can stay in that lane and split push for a very long time. However, it's going to look like SKT trying to draw them apart, pressure them, continue to pressure the map from multiple sides. Yeah, and this is very similar to what SKT did in their victories over Rocks Tigers, only this time they have a much larger mid lane goal lead. Duke being able to apply single man pressure in a side wave allows the rest of SKT to have a lot of freedom with where they go. Because if Samsung ever want to do a teleport play or get pressure somewhere, they're going to lose something to Duke's split push. So it really kind of takes the other team's aggression away from them. Just on the outside of the frame, Crown forced to flash away from Faker's shockwave. Juicy target for the next time Crown presents himself. Is Faker playing angry? Because uh, he got solo killed. It came back really quick. 209 CS to 187. SKT with 20 seconds until Infernal Drake spawns. 
making it very clear what the objective is. Vision inside Samsung's uh, jungle before they peel back and take their first dragon of the game. Yeah, using very proactive sweepers as well. Because of the map control they've had after taking the early turrets, they're fairly confident there's not many deep wards. If there was a place for Samsung to enter the fight, though, there is a ward behind SKT, but they just don't have the rest of the people there. Yeah, SKT have a lot of early alert wards in the red quadrant of the jungle, so they can see anything coming. And the thing is, an Infernal Drake is perfect for a team that wants to split push with that trundle. Boost his stats up as well. And they are going to be very happy about that one. Baker Whoa. goes in really aggressive, though. He did indeed. Trades the Shockwave. Chaos Storm not going to be enough to kill him, though. That was flash for the engage and goes to run away. Bengi's now going to Ragnarok out. I think Ambition smited that one down. So no buff steal for Bengi. But Faker... Faker, Faker, Playmaker, not this time. Yeah, a little bit of actual inconsistency coming out from Faker early on in this game. He gives the solo kill over to Crown early in the game. Fights back by getting the two-man shockwave, and then knowing he had the flash down, kind of goes for something, but ends up just flat out missing because Crown had a great sidestep. And honestly, I got to give a lot of credit to Crown because he has been outplaying in a couple of the different situations here. Didn't get all of them, but definitely earned that solo kill himself. No summoners available for him now, though, to avoid any further aggression. Well, when you've got uh, mechanics like that, just sidestep the meat. Don't get caught by the slow and. <laughs> Always sidestep the meat, Trevor. Now, the thing is, Crown has to do this level of performance throughout the entire series, and potentially, if he doesn't get his hands on Victor, Ambition, Ward's hop backwards, Dragon Kick, pin onto Duke against he's the wall. He's just going to fight Remember, him. Remember, there's not a lot of tech, oh. he has, but he's got so much damage. Cube still got the Poppy Copter, may need it. Support coming from the river. Wolf's looking to lock down Cube. Fire out the Copter! <laughs> Holds it, nobody gets called. Did I say Duke only wants to fight one person? Because he was very happy to take on yeah. two challengers there. If they can't burst you out as a ravenous Hydra Trundle, they're not killing you because he has so much sustained damage in those fights. And that's the type of distraction that SKT wants. And I'm pretty sure he subjugated Cuve as well to even get beefier and tankier. Exactly. And he had maxed out Frozen Domain second. So huge increase to the health gained back there for him. And what does this mean for Samsung Galaxy? 22 minutes into the game, down four and a half thousand gold, down three towers. This was a siege composition from Samsung that, you know, really wanted to either do well in laning or do well in late. And they've now got to play from behind for a long time. Yeah, and they still have the option of trying to win from late because Zyra, Caitlyn, Victor, and Poppy all scale incredibly well. But with the picks they had, they needed to win the bottom lane a little bit more, having the Caitlyn and using your first pick on Zyra. So that's where I feel like they failed from a composition perspective. The rest of it's been okay. Another huge thing for Samsung, though, is that they have extremely good wave clear. This is a very good team at stalling out. So if they want to bunker down and try to go very defensive here, they have Caitlyn traps to defend with. Zyra also great for counter engage and of course the victor crown here uh, can do a lot of work wave clearing not to match cuvee's poppy actually so plenty of defensive tools that they can try and use to calm the game down well that's assuming skt let them death cap morella nomicon for faker dusk blade ghost blade for bang everybody's got two items bengi's even got a dead man's plate even more speed to run at whoever the hell he wants to kill for skt been very impressed with uh, the speed of the game so far, and Samsung definitely showing up and fighting valiantly here in the early stages. See what they do, though, as the control for SKT, if you just look at the wards that they have on the map, slowly creeping in and closing off the options that Samsung have available. And it's not just the wards that SKT have, it's the lack of wards that Samsung have in the territory of SKT. It, like I said, it keeps taking away the playmaking opportunities that Samsung have. The wards are doing that. So does Duke's Trundle, because he's always requiring Samsung to send tension up there, which just limits the number of resources that Samsung can try and make a play elsewhere on. And not to mention, when they do try and make a play, Wolf has Karma and he can speed everyone away. So good disengage options and a nice strategy being executed here by SPT. All right, strategy in the mid lane. Jump on a core JJ. He's flashed over the wall. But that may put him in dangerous territory. Ruler gets caught by the fourth shot from Whisper. And Core JJ runs head first into Duke. Strangle Thorns comes out. Exhaust. Oh, great knockaway <laughs> from Cuvee. But Flash, two ultimates 
just yeah. to get in your own jungle. That knockback saved Core JJ's life. He was out flash and was face first to a trundle who'd altered him with Hydra and Iceborne Gauntlet. Really clutch actually by QB to save him there. And now we're gonna see SKT, why they are so famous. You know, once they get an early lead like this, how well they can close this off. Samsung has to face check, Ambition has to escape. He does indeed, sidesteps the deadly flourish, so there's no root just yet, starts to back away. And SKT, they're now gonna play the Baron game. Got a gigantic lead, advantages in every single matchup. And it looked like Faker was shoving out that bottom lane, met Crown. And now the rest of SKT, look at that, pings all throughout that left quadrant of the jungle and the Baron Pit. Such a tight grip on the vision game here from SKT. Both blue trinkets now on cooldown for Samsung, and it's getting very scary to play from their perspective. And it's actually a little interesting that SKT hasn't sent Geek to the bottom lane to threaten the split push there. Instead, they had Faker and Crown in the 1 3 1 despite not having teleport, but now they're kind of roaming back up and maybe looking to pinch Samsung within their blue side jungle. Plus, the next Drake that is spawning 30 seconds, SKT can back. Oh, oh, good flash from Ruler, keeps him alive. But that means once again, a juicy target as Baron is gonna be played. There's a Baron in the top, there's an Infernal Drake that might be easier slash safer. And Samsung trailing heavily at 25 minutes for the first time in their last 12 games here in the World Championship. And this is a very small window that Samsung would have to maybe fight SKT while Faker's down as ultimate. Something he's done on Orianna has been to bait flashes with it. They set up a play, no flash on Ruler here with which to juke. Fourth shot connects onto Crown. Chaos Storm still available and both summoners for Crown. Ambition takes a big chunk of damage as SKT. They get ship damage on the tower and then they back away. Yeah, and to elaborate a little bit on the Faker point, the cooldown of his ultimate is much shorter than the flashes of the opponent team, so when they have a lot of control, he can use it to bait flashes. Wow, good pin, good knock away. Cuve sends SKT flying, literally, to save his life once more. Yes, but the jungle is only theirs for five seconds. Yep. SKT flood right back in. They've got vision on both sides. Ambition looking to make maybe a hero play. He does have flash, so you can ward hop, you can Q in. Try and ward hop Q, then use your flash to escape with your life uh, and make some sort of, you know, miracle play to steal that Infernal. But SKT won't even take that chance because they don't have to. Exactly. I wonder, though, if with the recall from Bang, if that was somehow spotted, if Samsung would want to charge it. Looks a little bit unlikely. They don't want to overcommit in the river because of the flashes they are missing on Core JJ and Ruler. If I am Samsung right now and I'm looking at it from their side and we're trying to shot call for them, I, I kind of put a lot of my eggs in that farm for late basket. As you know, like you said, they do have this Caitlyn, which towards the late game, you know, does have a lot of objective control with the traps if you can set them up. But there's a lot of distance they need to make up as far as team fighting here. So unless an opportunity presents itself where they have a big numbers advantage, uh, I think they really do need to go into that defensive mode. Yeah, and it's so dangerous as well to do that against uh, and Orianna, because if you get hit by one Shockwave with your Squishies, it's generally over in the late game. That's how Faker was able to close out game one against Rock's Tigers when they just hit 45 minutes, Elder Drake fight, Shockwave's three people, and Ruler seems like he's always on the run here. Yeah, good 90 caliber right. away. <laughs> and Ruler's not gonna get caught by the rest. Bang just throwing those out, basically on cooldown, just to try to set up some plays. And once again, the Dance Run Infernal is set They're up. They're gonna pull the trigger. Crown is not there. Duke's not there either. Crown was doing blue buff, which is why they are starting there. So it's just only. to steal. Steal indeed. He gets it! Miracle play! Exactly as you want it to happen. Woo. Ambition comes through and steals away the Infernal. That will give them a bit more light at the end of the tunnel. Some hope for them to try and stall it out because now they just have to worry about this Baron bait that SKD can set up. Yes, it's still going to be hard to get vision on the Baron, uh, but they will at least have that extra Infernal in their pockets for later. Yeah, and the difference between a 2-0 Infernal versus a 1-1, that's a 16% swing as far as your attack damage and ability power multipliers. So critical. Well, of the 11 blue or red buffs that have spawned on the side of Samsung Galaxy throughout the game, they've only secured six of them. That blue buff that Crown just got his hands on, as you can see on your mini-map. It's one of the first in a little while, and this is this miracle steal by Ambition. Right, so Bangi, what he wants to do here on Olaf, every time you want to combo your reckless swing with the true damage, but Peng, uh, a bit too much burst, I think, for Bangi didn't, or maybe he had it on cooldown, uh, and was actually was a smite. Yeah, it looks like he smited at exactly the same time, uh, and Bengi was smited a little bit before his reckless swing landed, and Ambition smite 
cut in just before Bengis did so. Fractions of a second. That's how you have to try and steal against someone who has an execute ability, is pretend you're them. Yeah. And try and time your smite the same place they would. Those are the ones where you have to go back at the replay and look at it frame by frame to see each ability landing. All in all, though, what's important is that Samsung were able to steal that away and actually have a Drake advantage. Problem is, that big gold disparity. Well, gentlemen, we're approaching 30 minutes in the game. It's still very clear that SKT are in control of the game, but it feels like Samsung are stalling this one out. They're not giving away much more. What is Samsung doing well to combat this lead that SKT has accrued? Well, they're making sure that SKT isn't getting any 1-3-1 advantages, and it's also the wave clear we talked about earlier. The Caitlyn with the Hurricane and the Victor shove out the lane so well that it's actually very difficult for SKT to make bold plays. That's why they were waiting for the Infernal Drake and are now setting up around Baron because those are the objectives that can pull Samsung out of their wave clear pattern and get them into the open where SKT can hit them with the gold. And is it, how much of a mistake is the fact that Ambition could steal that dragon? Now it looks like SKT is setting up around Baron. They can't afford that same sort of uh, error. Um, around that buff, because of course Baron will completely change the course of the game. This is still SKT's match to lose, as they've got advantages in every single metric we track, except Dragons. As far as the mistake goes, I think it's just an execution play by Ambition, because when pulling out the Drake, they still denied Ambition the ability to target any execute damage, like you couldn't Sonic Wave to Resonating Strike Smite. It was really just a great play by Ambition. Also, you can see you know, how hard it is to have complete vision denial in the game in its current state uh, because of the limited amount uh, of trinkets and uh, pink wards. Here goes Ooh. SKT, though. Goes Faker, Faker ghosted. Not going to use the Shockwave yet, but threatened it. Ambition holds his nerve, no flash actually, so needed to ward hop away. Uh, Cubay's down in the bottom lane, teleport is available. And the rest of SKT again, it is the dance, it is the vision game. And the objective yeah. is the big purple one. And we talked a lot about SKT's ability to disengage, but we haven't necessarily touched on Samsung's because they're doing quite a good job of avoiding any of SKT's initiation. The curtain call bang is thrown up and been relatively ineffective, and aside from that <laughs> early shockwave, Faker hasn't landed much. It's sure Ambition just got that blue buff as well, denied <laughs> the steal at the very least. Ambition with the uh, hot hand, as you said, with the spike. Able to get a back-to-back -back objectives. That could bode well if the Baron is up next. Well, what does Ambition have to do on this Lee Sin? 1-3-1, one, one, down 40 CS. Has to find a ping-pong target of Faker or Bang. Really, to try and turn the tide of a fight in Cuba. Look at that gonna... damage come out. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you actually do threaten the Poppy as a trundle because of the Iceborne Gauntlet, but Poppy is also just incredibly elusive as far as running away, so Duke uses ultimate to get a third of Cuvay's health out, really not that much. Samsung have an incredibly sturdy team composition here with the double disengages of both Poppy and Lee Sin. Here comes the Charlie big Charlie. moment though. Baron has been started up and SKT try and chase Samsung back into their own jungle. Oh, they're gonna be able to two-man this with the shields and the autos. Is support now coming in from Beck? Samsung have no idea. They're simply too late. SK Telecom secure Baron uncontested. Finally able to claim the fruits of their labor. Constantly fighting this vision game for the last almost 20 minutes SKT has been in the blue quadrant of Samsung's jungle. They finally pulled the trigger and now they're going to have some pushing power for the siege. Yeah, that Baron was a much more SKT-like conversion of an objective rather than the Baron, the Dragon Steel we got to see from Ambition. Enough vision denial and enough threat of picking Samsung off that they just weren't able to check it. And that is incredibly impressive. I mean, Samsung, yes, uh, they haven't lost many games, but they've only given up one Baron of the in, in the entire tournament, and that was in their one, you know, game loss now to, to TSM. Yeah, doubled the number of Barons that they've given up, but it just speaks to, you know, how well they face check without, or how well they do fight that vision war, not face check, <laughs> without dying. Well, Samsung are going to have to keep doing that even more so as they find themselves down further gold, further pressure, ambition, doing what he can against Bengi, but I think Bengi's got over 4,000 hit points at this point. Yeah. I'm reading that correctly, and <laughs> it's just the battle over Vision. Vision doesn't want to give up that pink ward just yet. And you really want Core JJ to be able to finish off his Leandries. He's kind of going between the Rylai's with the Giant Spell right now. He eventually wants both of them, but he hasn't been able to farm up nearly as much as he would like on the support Zyra. 
Duke as well has snuck his way within the jungle here. Oh, this for is trouble. Ambition still got a flash available. Cube with a very good stun. The pressure allows Mountain to get secured. Yeah, and that's how they want to be able to deal with Ambition steal attempts, let alone stopping him from queuing the Drake. Just make sure he's 3,000 range away from him. And this is the how annoying it is to try and push against this team. This is what I was talking about earlier in the game with the Caitlyn and the Victor and even Zyra. And if you ever, you know, try and play against that team, comp, extremely difficult, even with the Baron buff for SKT to get inside and try and take down one of these turrets. But they want to make use of this buff. And Bang actually holding onto his crit shot as well to try and get uh, that quick burst of damage in there. If they can even move up to the turret. Well, still a minute and a half left on the buff. It looks like Duke is going to go toe to toe with Cubay down in the bottom lane. The rest of SKT grouped up in the middle. And Cubay, once again, the recipient of a subjugate, just getting hammered and wailed away on as Duke is pushing in to this inner turret. It feels like he may be able to get more damage on the tower than that mid lane, thanks to his Caitlyn Trap. Yeah, and he will actually be able to start killing these turrets unless they send multiple defenders to him. And if they don't, then that means SKT can kill the other turrets. He can ignore enough of the damage from QB with his SKT game. pushing in there. They got a lot of damage onto that turret, and it's about to fall over, but unable to topple. There it goes. Minions well, finish it off. Tower falls over. It took the, almost the full duration of Baron just for that single tower. But it is another big objective that allows more access to Samsung's jungle. And now SKT, look at that. He instantly hits that bottom quadrant, grouping up, and now sitting their sights in the inner bottom turret. 4JJ immediately flashes already. Shots two and oh. three and four all find their targets. Samsung's defense has been good up until this point. Uh, this is a slightly below average Baron power play for SKT. And they're st they still have it though. Still working with a couple uh, extra seconds here. Yeah. Keeping the pressure up bottom. I would also say it's kind of a slightly below average pace of game. SKT have really been focusing on wave manipulation this game rather than trying to get the right picks. And it's very slowly working. The scroll lead is increasing. And I feel like SKT is confident with their scaling advantage. Otherwise, I think they'd be making a few more aggressive plays. And if nothing else, not going toe to toe with what a phenomenal players on the Samsung side. We've seen a solo kill. We've seen Ruler and Core JJ set up plays on Bang & Wolf, playing the map, reducing the risk for SKT to lose team fights. And obviously that was much more relevant early in the game. Now with this gold lead and map lead, um, you have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to uh, risky engages. Meanwhile, the CS numbers stacking up very high here for SKT as Faker 432 keeping pressure in the split push. Oh, SKT, that. they kind of spread out into the 1-3 run in, able, uh, in order to get that extra outer turret that he just got on the top side, and now finally closing in on yeah. inhibitors. Even without the Baron buff, they were able to take half of that mid lane turret down. Duke always on the side. <laughs> They're playing back enough in their 1-3-1 that they haven't been engaged on by Samson. Well, Cubase never had a window to try and get a teleport flank off. This is really methodical play by SKT here. Great control and what you expect from a defending world champion. Looking to go up 1-0 in the series. They've already got a hand on the Summoner's Cup. They're looking to grasp it and hoist it one more time. In the bottom lane, Benji takes a lot of damage, but not enough to be worried just yet. Pillar of Ice throws Cube backwards. Gonna sidestep away once again. Great! Wolf is pinned against the wall. A lot of damage coming out, but the shield! That's a kill for Ruler! Now SKT, they've got to run for their lives. Look for the shockwave. That's gonna be game changer, even in a 4v5. Cubase rooted in place. The shockwave pulls him backwards. Oh. That's gonna pop the GA. Now curtain call. Second and third shot, not doing the most damage. Bang backs away. So few mistakes from SKT, but so often it's Wolf positioning this error, error there. Yes, Bangi is gonna run through that turret yeah. and run past, he but he's Olaf. Exactly, you, Wolf here tries to take the same route uh, right after him and yeah. gives up the kill to Samsung. Any extra gold that you give over to Samsung only further delays this game, further funds their defense. Yeah, watching this one more time, Wolf, he needs to just walk around the other side. He gets caught by the very tip of the strangle cord, and then Cubay sees the opportunity to flash stun him into yet another trap there from Ruler. So Wolf, never take that path again, especially if you support Duke. Just follow Faker. Uh, can they chase him? Good pin against the wall once again. Well, Duke went in a 1v2 earlier. This is now a 3v1. He's dead. Oh, they'll kill him twice. Face and frozen domain. That's the GA popped. Obviously, Samsung will try to give this kill over to Ruler. Everyone backs away. Ruler gets another, and SKT 
playing a little fast and loose. Another mistake, and that big mistake there, is that he's split pushing with nobody else on SKT applying pressure on the map. That ebb and flow we talked about, only one person you know, applying pressure, pretty easy pickup for Samsung, and they get the GA on top of it. And it boils down to SKT being a little sloppy. We thought they were being very slow and methodical, but now it actually seems like they may be a little bit unable to find the necessary means to close this game out. A number of things kind of <laughs> going over to Samsung right now is the Elder Drake and Baron spawn approach. And it's 40 minutes into game. That's 7,000 gold starting to be less significant. That's a four item Caitlyn. Leandris on Core JJ. Blue buff, two dragons, uh, two towers, almost a third. And yeah. Samsung, there's a big breath of life in this team. Duke and Faker are maxed items right now. Yes, Samsung is at five, so this is actually the moment. The next five minutes, Rescue T does have to win. They go fair. This is why you don't give up hope and you go for the farm for late. So this is going to be burned out very quickly, and SKT will get their second Baron. Duke teleporting way into the back line. But he's completed the teleport, jumps onto Ruler, 90 uh -oh. caliber, Sonic Wave, everything's connecting. Decent flash from Duke that will save his life. But Summoner Spell's blown. Samsung, 40 minutes, they have to defend another Baron buff. And I think SKT is going to try and shove the waves and then go right for the... Elder Drake right here. They have the mountain and can force it. And they could even, oh, they just used their teleport for Duke. So they could have used Duke to split push on the top side With and Baron. then threatened the Elder Drake like you're talking about. However, because he just used it to try and cut them off, they no longer have that extra tool to apply the split pressure and they're gonna have to just burn it down. Samsung is so far back in this play and this goes to show the lack of vision. If SKT gets Baron and Elder, that's just a massive flower player. We thought about Samsung being able to fight back, but if they're not able to harass the Elder at all, that's big trouble not in the right place, not able to contest or defend. Elder after Baron. Feels like the final nail in the coffin. Well, but, never but, say, never but. say that until at least you're inside the inhibitors. And such a weird full <laughs> game we've had because there were so many incredibly close and aggressive fights within the first 15 minutes. But really ever since SKT got the outer three turrets down, We've had, what, two to three kills in the last 25 minutes of the game? It's been so much 1-3-1 one, one, and such a small amount of engagement. It took 40 minutes of game time before Samsung took their first tower. Now they need to defend their last remaining ones. Once again, curtain call used for some form of harass. Ruler's doing what he can. Another BF sword approaching six items to clear out those waves. And poor JJ luckily got the Leandris, but it's going to take a lot of poke and harass. Shockwave onto Cubay. Faker just looking to get control. If there's no front line for Samsung, there's no hope in a fight. Elder Drake is a very short buff. They have another minute of this right now, so Samsung want to make sure they don't lose multiple inhibitors. Baker using his shield to go get damage on the turret, and they're inside the base. Inhibitor turret number one is down. Cubase doing what he can, this time against Bengi. Trying to throw out that buckler and wave clear as much as possible in the mid lane. The inhibitor drops. Bang and Wolf, they open up the base. Two lanes are exposed. SKT have so many threats in so many places. Samsung cannot find an opportunity. 30 seconds left on Elder Drake because Samsung really don't want to fight SKT while they have Elder Drake as well as the six item to five and a half item advantage. We have gotten to the point of the game where a single mistake holds a lot of weight. They can't afford for another play like Wolf walking through the turret or Duke split pushing by himself. SKT right now playing as a team. All members oh, closing in break. at once. Good damage onto Crown. Not going to be enough to kill him. He uses the Chaos Storm as well. That will allow the inhibitor to go down. SKT still got Baron. Ruler oh, goes down. The oh. Shockwave kills him. SK Telecom, they've opened the base. Even though Wolf gets knocked away, Cube can't do enough. Good pin onto Faker. Samsung aren't done just yet. Trying to rely on those Nexus turrets to help out. No damage from Ruler though. Nexus turret number one is going to fall. Crown's trying to wave clear, but it's against Baron empowered minions. Duke gets pushed away. The Nexus tower still stands. SK Telecom looking for the minions, looking for the support, looking for the tower. Cube's got a GA, so does Ambition. It's been popped already though. He's in trouble. There's a kill onto Faker. Not enough for the game just yet. Ambition dashes to safety. Safeguards to a teammate. It's a goal. Kill for Crown. He's not willing to give up the game just yet. And SK Telecom back away to have one more siege. But they lost multiple inhibitors, which is really painful. That means that SKT can group 
on the third inhibitor while Samsung have a full-time defender, so it's gonna be really difficult for them to fight back. And this kind of just goes to show why SKT are so confident in their late game with Faker Zoriana, because it only takes one as far as them being able to get the pick. They kill the ruler and then they go and make this push. Exactly. Here is Samsung's attempt at defending their Nexus with a single Nexus turret left up. Ooh, Crown. Flash by Crown. Crown's defense here at the end. And then he's able to clean up Duke as well, cornering him against the turret, then using the zone of the turret as defense and taking him down with the laser. Well, Samsung Galaxy now have two lanes of super minions to contest with. SKT. And they'll be able to push in. The last outer turret from SKT has fallen, but it's an 11,000 gold deficit that Samsung have to try and fight back from. Uh, take a look at itemization. GA is available for both Duke and Bengi as well as Cube. Ambition does not have that up for this next fight. Yeah, Duke changed his build to a more late game build as well. If you notice the Titanic and the Frozen Heart instead of the Iceborne and the Ravenous. And the rest of SKT are going to try and get this third inhibitor. I have to say though, I was going back to check that pick basically and that, you know, ult you're talking about from Faker. And it was one of those mistakes that we were talking about, the late game, big mistake. Ruler with the net backwards the wrong way after he took damage. Ah. And you cannot afford... Oh, Bang almost gets 100%ed! Not killed just yet, though. Manages to get the heal and the lifesteal. Bang's able to back away, and that's a lot blow for to try get that kill. Curtain Call now going to land, connecting onto Ambition as they run away. Undertow's going to slow them down, a big crit on Ambition. They've now got to fight without Chaos Storm. And thank goodness Wolf was there for the shield, otherwise that would have been a dead Jin right there. Nice job by Crown to wait in the brush, and with his Lich Bane, try and one-shot Bang. That nearly stopped the push. Doesn't work out this time around. Samsung trying their best to defend. Teleport's coming in the bottom quadrant. Cube's looking to come in from behind. He completes it. The minions are gonna kill the last Nexus turret if they don't immediately retreat to clear them. There's no time for Samsung. They have to go. The minions are coming in. Root. Bang and Wolf are in trouble. The Poppy Hammer throws up. Shockwave pulls up. Bang is into it. Bang is down. Where is Faker? Gravity field splitting them up. It's a double kill for Ruler. He's looking for more. Cuvay running for his life. Cuvay and Bengi, they're going toe to toe. The GA was popped. Here comes Duke in the base. The Nexus turret still stands. Ambition is clearing. And Samsung Galaxy live to fight another day. Samsung stand tall, but the Nexus turret still goes down there. And that just goes to show how they had to go at that exact moment. Any later, minions would have killed the Nexus. They killed the carries first. And oh my goodness, the comeback is actually a possibility. This will give them time for the inhibitors to respawn. 40 second death time is on the side of SKT. Baron is up in 10. Do Samsung have enough time for that? I think they do. Zyra is one of the most spectacular Baron killing supports. We're gonna take a look at the initiation very quickly and then jump to see them do the Baron. Getting them rooted by 4JJ right there into Bang and Faker, both getting knocked up by the Poppy Ultimate, bought them time to finish them off, and they're gonna get Baron. Oh my word, Baron is secured! Trevor, never say it until you're inside the base. They have one turret left. SKT <laughs> have killed the other 10. The Nexus is a completely exposed right now. And there would be a ward in their base if Duke really wanted to teleport in. But SKT's got to be careful that Samsung don't just run this up mid for the win. While Tower is going to fall in the mid lane, Ambition's trying to zone away Bengi on the side. Duke with his TP. What can he do? He's converted to this late game build. GA is up now for two members of Samsung Galaxy. Full itemization nearly across the board. Yeah, and Samsung has actually managed to equalize this game to a point, even though they haven't killed the turrets of SKT, where a team fight won by either team could win the game for that team. With how long the death timers are going to be at 50 minutes, they could push all the way up mid lane if they're able to ace SKT. Gentlemen, look at the itemization. We touched on how Duke changed to that tank build. Ruler sold his shoes, picked up a Phantom Dancer instead, if I'm reading that correctly. And this is where the value... Uh-oh, Duke does get a little bit caught in the jungle, but this... This is where the value of being a clutch player and the experience of being up on this stage matters so much. The poise under pressure, the discipline that SKT yeah. have, but Samsung are right there with them. Exactly, and for SKT, yes, they have poise, but they need to have the ability to recover right now because you would have expected the world's form SKT to have won this game 10 minutes ago 
when they had six items on all their major carries and before Samsung could match them. And it's actually insane that Samsung were able to recover with their 80 carry. Ambition Maybe with the pick, baby! Wolf is in trouble, flashes away, not gonna die yet. They got Owen! Ruler, not gonna get the kill! Ace in the hole, his body blocked, but it's not done yet. Teleport completes from Duke. Chaos Storm on top of the Strangle Thorn. Duke is still locked up. Bengi's running for his life. Baron empowered minions and super champions. They're doing the work. The tower has fallen. Sonic Wave on a Faker, but Ambition Faker. doesn't follow it. Faker still has Shockwave, and there's no flash on Ruler or Crown because because they flashed aggressively. So even though they want to push up, they fear the shockwave. Talking about discipline, it's actually Samsung, the underdogs that are showing it here. They don't overreach. They get their kill, they get their turret, and they back off to spend all of the money. Now they are all maxed out, and now it just comes down to the big plays. And watch this, Ambition goes for the kick. Wolf flashes. He shields himself and also McHales himself for the extra heal. And that is enough to get him away. If Ambition had hit that thought, the first Sonic Wave, his kick into Sonic Wave, if that had hit, that was a dead wolf. Didn't matter though, Samsung still were able to take down that turret. So important, no flash on Ruler, no boots on Ruler. And you see the drop down, longest game at Worlds. Samsung's average game time was 33 minutes coming into the series. And now they're looking to have one of the best comeback wins, if they can do it. Yeah, and it's still a big if, because they are without turrets on two of their inhibitors and without turrets on their nexus, which means minion waves like this, Ambition has to go and manage. Because if any semblance of minions reach their base, they will kill the inhibitor. Jet, it's a ZZ Rot portal once That'll again help. on that the World the Championship That's what they stage. Need to do. He's placed it up on the top side, so that's going to apply pressure there for Samsung, and they can play around the Elder Dragon that's spawning in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Team fight is a possibility, but do not walk onto the shockwave from Faker. Ambition under some trouble. Cubase threatening with that steadfast presence. And I have to point out an item choice here by Ruler. He sold boots for Phantom Dancer, which gives him over 100% crit, but makes him much less likely to dodge a shockwave. If Faker hits the shockwave on him, the game would most likely be over. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Pressure again. Fake has shown his willingness to fire that shockwave many times. Baron has now worn off, and Samsung, they are now to set up for uh, Elder Dragon. Vision control means so much at this point. If you have to walk into an SKG Ambition team that are threatening, steal. Ambition has been so good at stealing objectives with this fight, but he's not going to risk it here. They know they cannot fight a four versus five. Sacrificing his life there would not be worth it. And there are some differences here since the last time SKT got Elder Drake. This time, they do not have Baron, and they also do not have the minion waves prepped in the right spot. But SKT are on a two-minute clock right now to get the minions to Samsung's base and force Samsung to fight them while they have this Elder Drake. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the excellence that is the first game here of the finals and the underdogs showing up in such a big way here? Well, we saw Crown Ruler get rid of his boots. Crown's done the same. Yes. No Sork shoes, Ludens instead. And he has no magic resist items either. So Crown and Ruler will get obliterated if Faker lands a shockwave on him. And you see a difference in item philosophy right here. SKT prioritizing movement. No one has sold boots in their max builds. Crown and Ruler both have. Also, there's very little hard CC on the side of SKT for this team fight. That's why you keep bringing up the Shockwave, Jet, because it's so important to their victory. And Faker being the clutch player is so important if they are going to end this game. Big shot, Ace from the hole connects onto Faker. And how important that Cloud Drake might be for Samsung, considering they've sold their shoes, considering <laughs> they're going all in on the aggressive stats. It's a 6,000 gold game at 55 minutes that literally does not matter anymore. What matters is who gets caught out of position and Duke might be the man that's caught. Oh! He pulls it short, he pulls it short. It was an opportunity that maybe they could have gotten something, but there's 10 seconds left for Elder Drake. Faker had actually been harassed to get pushed back and yeah, Big miss by Cubay, but they've also stalled for the Elder Drake. That's one mistake, but they have to recover quickly, just like they recovered before. SKT are knocking at the doors once again. The rewards behind SKT if Cubay wanted to. All try, right, try, try again! Number two, Steadfast Presence. Pin not going to be a lockdown. Duke's able to get away very easily. The reason they're trying this is because Crown and Ruler actually have enough damage to kill him here, but Ruler! Ruler's in trouble, but Bengi takes so much damage! Flash away from 4JJ, Ambition's looking for Bengi, Faker gets caught up. Whoa! Oh, he gets He's That's the shutdown! Faker goes golden! He's killed by Ruler! What can Ruler do? Oh. Nothing! He's killed by Bang! 
CD carry and mid laner down. There is a reply onto Bang though, as Qface doing work in the back line. Wolf is pinned against the wall. Duke has to fight this one out for SK Telecom. He's trading with Qface. He traded his soul. Who can kill Trundle right now? All the damage from Samsung is dead. Nobody! The inhibitor is the target. Ambition forced to ward up the safety. SK Telecom take another They're gonna inhibitor. Do it. They turn their attention to the, the Nexus. Nexus. They're going to go for the Nexus. Duke is stunned temporarily. The Nexus is being killed. There's two members of Samsung against three members of SK Telecom. And the Nexus goes down. The defending world champions win game one. Oh, my goodness. That final fight with all the big damage dealers down, the meat shield trundle just walks to the Nexus to end the game. And boy, did SKT have to work for that one. 53 minutes plus there. And we said a lot of it was just gonna come down to that incredible late game team fighting. Flashes were down on Samsung. Faker actually missed his initial flash forward, but he caught Crown with the second one. And even though he traded his life for Ruler, Duke and Bang were able to finish him off in that fight. And it, it was all worth it because if they get rid of the damage dealers, no one can kill Duke. Sustained damage there from Duke in the very end as he cleans up the extra member and the Nexus. Exceptionally entertaining game one, despite that slow period in the mid game. And there's a lot of big questions here. Did SKT play too passively, which allowed Samsung back in the game? Did Samsung play so well defensively that SKT couldn't do more? These are questions that, you know, you can debate and argue uh, on this first watch through the game, and it's something that both these teams have to figure out what to do next match. If we're setting the bar at perfection, then yes. Uh, and this team, obviously, no team is playing the exact perfect League of Legends, and no team ever has. Yeah. But SKT show there, still able to pull it out with, takes them two Elder Dragons, which is extremely yeah. rare. Yeah, and an incredibly long game. 54 and a half minutes is longer than SKT would like to close that one out. <laughs> and I think they're going to be a little bit hard on themselves because they played the early game very well. And then with that lead, you would have expected them to close it out much earlier. With that being said, Samsung had tremendous wave clear installing tools, and they were able to prevent SKT from making a lot of those big plays for most of the game. It worked out in favor of Samsung in terms of stalling. There was some hope, there were some chances, but at the end of the day, they gave away too much in the early game. They needed SKT to make mistakes for them to come back into the game. Now Samsung likely gonna be red side. Obviously, it'll be SKT's choice, and we've seen a penchant for picking blue. How does this, uh, Samsung come into this game? Because they gave away more, right? Like, they, they made a lot of mistakes to get punished early. This breaks their win streak as well. It's the first game Korja J has lost at Worlds. They need to make sure that they're very mentally strong. I think from a picks and bans perspective, they need to pick a slightly stronger early game because they've shown they can stall out, but that's where they really lost this one. The other thing is that SKT series, SKT final series, have a tendency to go this way where game one is fairly yeah. close yep. and then they close the screws. They let Crown have his victor, they beat his victor. That sends a message. <laughs> we'll find out whether or not they get victor again. For now, we're going to head back down to the analyst desk to break down game number one.